Okay, YouTube, in my last video, we redefined how to find the six trig ratios of a given angle theta in general, so long as it's sketched in standard position and we have a point on the terminal side. Um, in this video, we're going to kind of put that definition to use. So really, really quickly here, I just want to kind of recap. If we had some angle theta in standard position, you'll have to forgive my very, very quick sketching of this here, but we say this is some angle theta in standard position where we know a point x, y on the terminal side, we could say, well, then we would know the height of this triangle here would be y just because I look at the point. And we say this would be x, and we'll call this some distance r. But we said if we want to find the sine of this angle here, or the cosine, or the tangent of this angle, what we could do is we really could just use the values on this point here and our r value to say things like, well, the tangent of this uh, would be like opposite over adjacent. So Koto would say y over x. So we say the definition of a, a tangent of an angle in general is just y over x so long as it's in standard position and we have a point on the terminal side. Uh, same thing with cosine and sine. Sine is so, so opposite over hypotenuse. We have y over r and then adjacent over hypotenuse here for our cosine. So we say x over r. And I'm not going to list the reciprocal functions because it's really not worth our time. We can just flip those over. But let's go ahead and put these to use. It says find the six trig functions or ratios of theta if theta is in standard position and the point negative 2, 3 is on the terminal ray or terminal side of theta. So we want to start always by making a sketch of what we see here and just being clear on what it is we're talking about. So I really want to take my time on this sketch here. It looks like we're going left 2 and then uh, up 3. Left 2 and up 3. You'll notice this is our point x, y on the terminal side. So I actually I like writing that over here too. We say x is uh, negative 2. Let me get that out of the way. Negative 2 and y is 3. We'll go back and we'll find r. Uh, but for now, we say, okay, well, this is some point on the terminal side. The question is, well, where's our angle theta? And this is where I lose people a lot of time. They still need to sketch the angle. Recall that it is in standard position and that its terminal side is going through this point. So all we're saying is that, look, I know the initial side is over here. It's just that the terminal ray goes through this point. So where was our angle? Now, a lot of people say, well, we could sketch it this way or we could sketch it this way. And it is often, you know, good practice to make it the angle between 0 and 360 that would be in the same spot. But here's our angle theta, and I don't know anything else about this angle, and I want to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of it. So for the first time, you're probably seeing a situation where you're like, well, how do you even make a, a triangle out of this? Do you like, do you, do you do this? I mean, like, where's your right triangle? The simple fact is this. We actually get in the practice of whenever we sketch an angle, taking our point here and dropping an altitude down to the x-axis. But what you're going to see is this. Essentially, we could see that our y value and our x value, we already have those. Those are listed over here. But we could even point them out on the triangle if we want. We could say that this y value is 3 and this is negative 2 displacement wise and that we still need r. Now r is the one value that we simply haven't gotten yet. That's really not a bad thing to go and do, but we say r. Recall that r, if x squared plus y squared equals r squared, then r would be the square root of x squared plus y squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this. We're going to substitute in the two values we have here. So we say x squared plus y squared. Again, I'm just getting my x and y from the point that was given to me here. So we say, all right, I've got a negative 2. And I've got a 3. So this is the square root of, this would be square root of 4 plus 9. Ooh, I better make those a little bit more distinct. 4 plus 9 is a square root of 13, which we're totally okay with having. We say this is equal to the square root of 13. But we can write that over here. Square root of 13. And it's positive. We say it's always positive. So we say, all right, so sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. All we're going to do is use our new definition now. So we say, all right, in this case, I would get sine is y over r. So our y value of our point is 3. Our r value is root 13. And then we'd say, okay, well, x over r is our cosine. So I get negative 2 over root 13. And then tangent is y over x, y over x. So we get this 3 over negative 2. Okay. And so here's the thing I want to do before we kind of do anything else. I want to go ahead and show you that it's super important that we just go ahead and do this now. Let's go ahead and write out our three reciprocal functions before we forget. Also, another good reason to do so, uh, I'll show you here in a second, but we get root 13 over 3. This would be root 13 over 2. We'll put the negative up top, okay? And then we'll put uh, negative 2 thirds, which we could put the negative up top here also. But uh, these are all reciprocals of one another, and these are all that I was looking for. Now, one thing I do want to mention is if you're left with, say, 3 over root 13, which by all rights we should rationalize, okay? Uh, you would get instead this. You would get 3 root 13 over 13. Okay, so this technically is our sine value that we should be listing up here. I just want to point that out. We should write it this way.
But the reason why I told you not to up front is because if you try to flip this, you're going to get 13 over 3 root 13, which, by the way, when you rationalize it, you say times 13 times root 13, top and bottom, we get this 13 root 13 all over 3 times root 13 times root 13, which is 13, and then these 13s cancel out, and I get root 3 over 13, or root 13 over 3, which is what I started with in the first place, but the point is this, you don't rationalize when you're all done reciprocating. Okay, so really quickly here. Let's take a look at this next example. It says find the sine and cosine of a 45 degree angle. So this is what we want to do. Sine and cosine of a 45 degree angle. And you might say, well, how am I supposed to use this definition up here to do this? Because it says I can find the sine cosine tangent of any angle given a point on its terminal side. And I don't have a point on this one's terminal side. So here's the deal. I even make this note here. It says start by sketching it and finding a point on the terminal side. So of course a 45 degree angle which splits a 0 and a 90, we'd say this is roughly a 45 degree angle, we could call this our theta here. Uh, we don't have a point on the terminal side, but the cool thing is this, we could find one, and the nice thing about the fact that this is a 45 degree angle is the fact that 1, 1 is going to be on this side. It is going to have gone, if this is 45, 45, 90, then these two sides here are isosceles. So we could say that this point on the terminal side, x is equal to y. Like, like x would have to equal y, uh, otherwise this wouldn't be an isosceles triangle. So here's the deal, we could say 1, 1 is on the terminal side, 2, 2 is on the terminal side. We could say uh, x, x is on the terminal side, but it's got to be the same thing. So for instance, if I wanted to now do this, we could say, well now I know, I know a point on the terminal side, x and y. And you know what, I haven't figured out r, but I do know this, it's the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 2. So I would say, well, now knowing this, the sine of 45 degrees would be, according to our definition, y over r. We get y is equal to, well, the y value at this point is 1, and the r value we just found is the square root of 2. So this is really, when I rationalize it, the square root of 2 over 2, and that's just because I just did this in my head. Don't, don't think that I did anything special, okay? And then cosine of 45, we say cosine is x over r, and I say, well, my x value here is kind of hard to see is 1. My r value is root 2. So I also get 1 over root 2, which is root 2 over 2. So yes, we can still use this definition. I just had to go find a point on the terminal side. And last but not least, speaking of finding a point on the terminal side, what happens when somebody wants you to find the six trig functions of 270 degrees? Which, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and sketch it now because we already need to on all of these. But recall in standard position, we would leave the positive x-axis and 270 degrees, which, by the way, is 390s. It would be here. So we'd say this is some angle theta that's equal to 270 degrees, and I want to find the six trig ratios of this. And again, what I want you to notice is I can't even make a triangle, but I can tell you this. I can tell you some point on the terminal side, for the love of goodness, just tell me some point x, y. So I said, well, what would be some point that lies on this side? And the easiest one I can think of is zero for my x, of course, but maybe zero, negative one. I could use zero, negative two, zero, negative three. The whole point is I have a point on the terminal side. I had to think about it, but I have it, okay? And we say, well, where is R? Now, the thing I want to point out is this. Again, R is by definition the distance from this point back to the origin. So when we say R, we really mean that R is this distance right here. And in this case, R is 1 just because it is intuitively obvious that this is 1 away from the origin. But again, I want you to see this. So, so far, here's what we've got. X, Y, R. We've got a point on the terminal side. Its x value is 0. Its y value is negative 1. So we'll block those off. And r would be the square root of, here you go, 0 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is the square root of 0 plus 1, which is the square root of 1, which is plus or minus 1, but we're just going to keep the positive 1. So just like we said here, we could always use the definition to check this out. So last but not least, we say find the six trig functions of 270. Let's go ahead and do this. We say sine of a 270 degree angle, which would be our y over r. In this case, we get a y value of negative 1. Here we go. It's all right here. Negative 1 over an r value of, in this case we had an r value of 1. So the sine of 270 is really negative 1. It's just this. We say, how about the cosine of 270? Now this is really kind of a good one to look at. We say cosine x over r. We say our x value is 0 here. Our r value we said was 1. So this is just 0. So the cosine of a 270 is 0. And then my favorite, tangent of 270. Check this out. My definition is y over x. And our y value this time is negative 1. And our x value is 0. So we get this undefined. So this is very important. 
it is sometimes the case that trig functions are undefined. That means you would have to divide by zero. When we reciprocate all these, by the way, when I say the cosecant of 270 and I get the reciprocal of this sign right here, I get one over negative one. So this is still negative one. We'll block this off here. We say secant of 270. Secant now, look at this. When we reciprocate uh, zero, this is an important thing to know. Uh, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. So we could say, well, the secant of 270 is undefined because it was zero over one line to the cosine of it. And then last but not least, the cotangent of 270 degrees. The important thing to take away from this lesson here is this, the reciprocal of undefined is zero. So again, the reciprocal of zero is undefined and undefined is zero, but this is how you would use the new definition of the trig functions uh, to find the trig ratios of any angle theta so long as it's in standard position and you know point on the terminal side. Cheers.